Yeah, I was having a day. Um, welcome. Welcome if you're new here. My name is Shalar and this is a safe place. If you are new here and never seen my face before or even heard my voice and don't know what this channel is about, you're about to find out. For those of you who are not new here, welcome back. I appreciate you. Eh. I appreciate you stopping by and you're always the real MVP. Just to get it out of the way, trying something new, hit that subscribe button, join the fam, join the support group, be a part of the squad, gang gang. Hit that notification bell so you know every time I upload and drop down in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about this video. Let me know if you wanna see more things like this. And without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so by the title of this video, and I kind of titled it abrasively, but let's be honest, I'm fat. I can say that, oh, my water all in the way. I got salsa water, guys, I'm trying to be healthy. <laughs> um, dressing our fat. I have compiled, I have my notes, by the way. Got my notes, got my notes. I have compiled a list of essential items to dress fat classy-wise and not just exposing it. And I think it'll be very helpful. Disclaimer, I am short. I am only 5'2". So please keep in mind that certain things might be long on me and not long on you. Or they might be super short on me, so you might need to wear it as a shirt. Two, I am not a real plus size person. I wear an extra large at most, but I do like to dabble in one X if I wanted to be a little oversized. Okay? Okay. Three, everything I am saying is not law, it's just what I've learned in my own personal experience and what works for me. So if you have a personality or a style of dress that is similar to mine, then I think this would be helpful for you. Four, we are pro shapewear on this channel, okay? Now, I just don't wear shapewear for the sake of these videos so you can see the clothes in their entirety, but we are pro shapewear out here in these streets, okay? Okay, now, so I've broken, I try to be all organized for y'all, okay? I've broken this video up into four, four outfit sections, yeah, four. Starting with pants, okay, pants, your girl, looked up I did research I did Google some stuff I always do that because I'm into fashion so I look into different silhouettes different body types and overall all these things will help and work with pretty much all fat body types apple pear shaped hourglass rectangular shape it does help with all of them so let's just get into it I'm not gonna rant. so first is pants so the first kind of pants are straight leg all of them Number one rule about any bottoms that you wear. High waist everything, okay? High waist everything. Skirts, pants, shorts, leggings, high waist everything, okay? Train that waist to be snatched. Nobody want muffin tops all year round, fat or skinny. We just don't want it, okay? Train your waist. High waist everything. Okay. My hair looks so uneven and it's not, I didn't cut this side at all. It's just because I dyed it. So now the curl pattern's weird, but that's a tangent. Sorry. Um, back to what I was saying. Pants. First kind of pants, straight cut pants. Okay. Straight hem pants. Ones that drop at your ankle. You should definitely have a pair of these in your closet. Why? For numerous reasons. One, it elongates your legs. So if you're short like me, or you have shorter legs and a longer torso and you're gonna balance it out, it stops at your ankle so it accentuates your shoes, if you have cool shoes or not, so it shows where your leg stops. But since they're high waist, it shows that it goes up higher than it normally does. Um, accentuates your shoes, of course, so if you have cool shoes, that helps. And it helps you appear taller when you wear them. How does it help you appear taller? Think about it. When tall women or men wear pants that are too short for them, you it emphasizes their height. Same concept with straight legged pants, especially if they're slightly capri'd and a little higher than your ankle, it gives, and you wear a heel with it, it gives off the impression that they're a little too short for you, so you look taller in your pants. See, I did that. Mm -hmm. Next, wide leg pants. Wide leg pants, two things they do for you. Accentuate your waist because you know, that's the only thing that's cinched in on the pants. The pants don't hug your legs. It's just free flowing and your waist is the only thing that's actually being hugged by any sort of material on the actual pants. Ooh, anyway, I'm kind of embracing them today, all right? Also, because they're looser fitting, they don't accentuate your belly line, okay? 
That's the key to hide that belly line, especially if you're not feeling like you wanna struggle into shapewear. There are definitely days where I don't feel like wearing shapewear, so when I wear wide leg pants, and I didn't always like wide leg pants, I thought I was too short for them, but then I realized I could just cut them. Um, they hide my belly line so I don't have to wear shapewear. I just wear good underwear, you can't see the line, and they feel like pajamas, so I'm comfortable and I'm cute. Especially if you wear with a bodysuit, that makes that part of you seamless and very structured and put together. So, dropping gems already. Banking on the high waist thing, the next pair of pants are paper bag pants, paper bag waist pants. These pants, I think, are very underrated. People don't really use these pants. They don't utilize them to the best of their ability, okay? One quote we got on this channel, utilize your resources, okay? If you get high, if you get high waist pants, but then you make them paper bag waist pants, which makes the waist even higher, it goes above your waist, you give off the illusion of where your waist is and where it actually isn't. You can move it around, especially if you're taller or shorter, depending on how high the paper bag is. The ruffling will give you an illusion of a higher waist, a lower waist, a thinner waist, because they usually come with a belt, and the belt you kind of bow and it falls over your pouch. That kangaroo pouch you be trying to hide, you can hide under that belt and all the ruffles and stuff. Okay? Again, gems. I'm dropping gems. Jeans. Jeans are the next one. There are two types of jeans that I think we need to pay attention to. One is the boyfriend jean. The boyfriend jean gives you a slightly looser leg so it doesn't cling to everything so you give off the illusion that you're slightly thinner in your leg area especially if you don't like your thighs and then skinny jeans skinny jeans give off the appearance of you being taller because they suck onto especially high waist skinny jeans so since they suck onto everything everyone's focused into that streamline of what's going on so your waist is really high up it gives you the appearance of longer legs and then if you pair them with heels, you just look taller with long legs. Almost statuesque like, I'm just saying. Y'all should be charged, I should be charging for this. Charge. Do we have any questions so far about pants? Questions, comments, concerns? Are you following along? You're still here? Good, because the next section is skirts, okay? <laughs> First skirt we got is a midi skirt. Okay, the midi length skirt is the skirt that drops like your shin just past your calf, not all the way down. Wonderful. It is a great addition to have. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. You can have two different types of midi skirts. You can have a free flowing midi skirt. I have a pleated one. It's really easy walk going and you don't have to worry about shapewear because it's long and it's, it's loose. It doesn't cling to you. The second kind is the pencil skirt. The traditional pencil skirt, you know, that everyone should have, especially if you work in an office. It gives off curvage okay even if you are not curvy and you are a rectangle shape you wear a midi pencil skirt and it will give you the illusion of larger hips and a smaller waist will give you the illusion of an hourglass body shape and you're gonna be killing okay okay especially with a good pair of pumps just saying the next skirt is a line skirt and you're probably like what is an a line skirt a line skirt actually just kind of looks like a triangle shape without the bottom literally an a so where it cinches in your waist, but then it comes out around your hips. Usually skater skirts can cinch your waist and then fan out, so like that. Um, really good for emphasizing your waist, really good for making your legs look longer because it is a shorter skirt usually. And if you get pleats, covers you nicely. And the skirt that I'm wearing in this video is a 1X, so it's big on the waist, but I like pin the waist so it really fits me and it looks great and it comes down a little longer over my butt. They usually do if they're pleated and then they're plus size, okay? I'm gonna be covered and not naked out here in these streets. Um, next is our mini skirt. The mini skirt though, I'm not just any mini skirt. Don't just be buying mini skirts out here, okay? Preferably structured mini skirts. Ones that don't have that much stretch and that are pretty true to size. One, they hold you in so you look a little bit more tucked. And then once you put on shaper underneath it, girl, look at, look at snatched, snatched for the gods. That's all I'm saying. But if you do get like a cloth one, get one with a thicker cloth that snaps back a little bit more and still hugs you in. Don't get one of them loose, thin. You hold it up, you can see your neighbor house through it. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's just sad and shame. Just so you guys know, the point of this video is not to hide your fat, but to make your fat look sexy. On to my favorite thing 
in the world dresses dresses okay so I have my notes and I have like three types of dresses written in the book that's why I keep looking down but there's two other dresses that I included because I thought about them as I was doing this so excuse me first dress the fit and flare dress where it usually hugs me I'm busty so if you got big boobs like sis over here it hugs your boobs and then it fans out okay if you don't have boobs it hugs like the top part of your torso and then fans out by your hips um, there are different types of fit and flare. There's the milkmaid one that comes that literally cuts off right here and then flares out like a baby doll kind of dress. But those are all fit and flare dresses because they cinch and then they flare out. Those are really good for hiding belly fat. Next is the oh so essential bodycon dress. Okay, so the bodycon dress is tricky because they come in so many different types of ways. Now. If you're gonna wear a bodycon dress, preferably pay a little extra, get one with a little thicker material. The one that I have on in this video is a slightly thicker material, but I didn't pay that much for it, I got it on Amazon. And once I put on shaper, it looks fine. But also, again, I'm not a 1X, I'm smaller than a 1X. So anything, anyone who's 1X and larger, opt for a more expensive one with thicker material. And I'm gonna get to that next. That's gonna segue into the next dress. But bodycon dresses, try to get ones that have sleeves, either a cap sleeve, a short sleeve, maybe a long sleeve, I like long sleeve ones, but with a sleeve that comes up over your back, okay? Hide them back rolls, okay? Tuck them in. It's not a problem, just make them look neat and tidy and that's what people wanna see, clean cut. I've come to realize that a lot of people don't think fat is attractive unless it's packaged right. Now, if you're not packaged right, and I actually kind of learned part of this from my mom, but if you're not packaged right, that's when people feel like they have the right to be rude and disrespectful to you because they assume that you don't care about yourself. I'm here to help you package it right so people can sit there and double take and reconsider with the things that they thought they were going to say to you. And if they do feel like saying something to you, you have the confidence to answer them back and be like, okay, and your mama. Sorry, that got a little personal, but... You know what I mean. Moving on to the next. The one. next dress is the midi dress. Okay, the midi dress again, like the midi skirt, comes down about your shins, around your calves. This particular one I have on is a midi dress, but I have a butt and I have boobs, so it rises a little bit because it is an extra large. So there's room in it. If I had no boobs, it would come down longer. Especially if I had no butt, it would come down longer. But it stops like just all my knees or just a little bit below my knee. But those dresses, this one's a more casual one for like an everyday, like I would wear this one to work. But if you wanted more of a classier one that you could wear to a function, those usually give off straight elegance. They make you look bougie, you look like the boss. You look like you walked in and said, hey, where my drink at, sir? Where's the waiter? Excuse me, you're not the waiter. Snap for the keys, valet, please. Okay, that's what those dresses give off. Um. Again, with midi dresses, opt for ones with sleeves or thick straps that come up over your back and tuck in those rolls and make everything look clean cut and seamless, especially if you're wearing shapewear, but you're not wearing full body shapewear. You wanna keep it together and clean and tucked and nice, neat as much as possible. On to our next two dresses that I did not have written. The next dress is the structured dress. This is what I was talking about with the body con dress. A structured dress is a dress that has stretch in it, but it's such a thick material that you have to put in effort to like really stretch it like that. That's the type of material you wanna opt for and it does usually cost a little bit more. So the one I have in here has like no sleeves but it has like broad embroidery here and it comes up over my back fat. But it sucks in and it gives off the illusion of a thinner waist, okay? Um, before this gives off the illusion, but if you're gonna wear bodycon dresses also, cause I forgot to add this for that one, try and find bodycon dresses that have like illusion prints and lines on them, like the one that I have on. Um, it will give off in the front the illusion of your waist being smaller and coming in and giving off the illusion of rounder and wider hips if that's what you're going for. Um, and it, keep, it gives you more of an hourglass shape or more of a pear shape if you are just smaller up top in general. Um, illusion threading and stuff is crucial. The last dress we're gonna talk about is your trendy dress. The trendy dress, I think a lot of bigger women are scared to wear, and I get why they're scared to wear it. 
I know a lot of bigger women think that they can't wear certain trends, but that's not true. You can wear trends. So the one that I have in this one has actually, I think, like four different trends in it. And it's a lot. And I think those are the best ones for us to wear because people think that because you're bigger, you should not You should stay away from stripes, florals, polka dots, patterns, just in general. And that's not true. So this particular dress has the tiered pattern on the dress where the lines and you can see the layers and stuff like that. That's really trendy this year, but it's also a really good feature. I also, in my fit and flare one, it's tiered as well. It gives off a more playful, fun, stacked look. It's nice. It makes the material look heavier, and with the layers, it does add in that second lining on top of the lining that's there, because the layers overlap. The blue dress also is a floral print. I like prints. I like florals. I prefer dark florals, but this is a pastel floral, and I thought it was really cute. It has a Victorian neckline, but it also has a square neckline. Giving me everything, okay? I think square necklines are so cute, and I think they look nice on me. You don't have to have a small chest to wear that. I think square leg lines go for both bustier and smaller chest women. Um, high necks accentuate your shoulders, but they also make your chest area look longer. Um, and if you have on bomb makeup, you know, it just highlights your head, personally. This dress also has a belt to tie and cinch the waist at the top as well. I know it's a lot going on, but it helps because as big and flowy as it is, you can wear it like that and not have to worry about the shapewear because I would wear it without shapewear. I need brunch. I need to be, be able to get out my house and something so I can wear it to brunch or to church or something because it's great. Um, but if you wanted to tuck it in, suck it in, tie it real tight, I still don't think you would need shapewear because it's very flattering. So trendy dresses are key. You just need to know your body type. You need to know what you like and don't like. And then this way, you, it's shopping is a little easier because you can search distinctly for what you're looking for instead of just shopping around thinking oh this might look nice on me and it doesn't and you just wasted your money and time okay moving okay. on to our last topic our last two topics i'm gonna mention today tops so the first top we got is a peplum top okay peplum tops are good for accentuating your waist or giving you the illusion of a waist and giving you the illusion of rounder hips wider hips or hips in general if you don't have hips, okay so it comes in and then it flares out all around and they look good with jeans, they look good with skirts, and there are dresses with peplum hems around the midsection, so it covers the fupa, all right? Covers the pouch, okay? Don't think I forgot about that. They're good for that. Next is the long line crop top. You're probably like, what the heck is a long line crop top? Think of a crop t-shirt that's not really cropped. So the t-shirt lands right on top of your fat pouch. Me, my kangaroo pouch, it lands right on top of it. That's the best area because when you wear leggings or jeans, it stops right there. So it's not breaking it up, which gives people a place to zero in. It just stops and starts seamlessly. It just lays right there. It's not, and it's not clinging. So no one's looking at it. Mind you, when you wear bigger t-shirts, I know a lot of bigger women think that wearing oversized t-shirts helps hide the fat. Sometimes wearing the oversized t-shirt when you walk, it clings to the fat and it just highlights that area. That's why crop t-shirts are good because they just lay on top of it and they move. They don't cling to it because it's not long enough to go over it. Next is the loose top, that loose boxy type, where it's just like blouses, button ups and stuff like that. Really good because it doesn't highlight your fat areas. You just put it on and it lays loose. If you wanted to tuck it in, it still lays loose. It's not too structured most of the time. And it gives you wiggle room. So people are trying to figure out what your waist is, what it looks like, how skinny and thin it is. And they can't really find out because it doesn't give you a defined area to look at. Okay? Bombs! Dropping gems, bombs, all of that. Next is our crop top, okay? The crop crop top, okay? The crop top that's stop like right here on me. and kinda looks like a bralette, but it's a crop top. If you are confident enough to wear that by itself, especially if you have no boobs like me, and your boobs are like a B cup, go ahead, be my guest. You most likely don't have back fat either, so hey, to each his own. If you got that confidence, go for it. But for those of you who don't, especially those of you who are busty like myself, and can't just walk around like that anymore. These crop tops are great to pair on top of t-shirts, okay? T-shirts. I like this 90s S style because it's very useful, it's functional, and you can pair with a lot of them. So you can 
choose different colored crop tops, white t-shirt, black t-shirt, gray t-shirt, basic, if you could do a pastel t-shirt, depending. You can do so many color combinations, especially if you can't make up your mind on whether or not you want to wear a crop top or a t-shirt that day. Wear both. Goes together. Perfect harmony, okay? Perfect harmony. It goes with skirts, goes with jeans, goes with shorts, goes with biker shorts, goes with everything. Definitely a key aspect. Another way to wear those crop tops they can be worn under jackets, which segues me into the last topic of clothing item. Jackets, blazers, oversized long line blazers or form like fitted blazers work really well because they accentuate your waist if you button it closed and then you just see the top. Um, if not, if it's oversized and you let it loose, it still covers up the midsection area and it doesn't cling to it. So it's not the first thing that everybody looks at when they're seeing it, okay? It's just not. Um, I recommend wearing blazers and like long line jackets and stuff like that over them just because they also amp up your outfit. Next is the pattern jacket. The pattern jacket. Again, big girls being afraid to wear patterns, but if you wear it in a jacket, I know you might be scared wearing it in a dress or a shirt or shorts, but if you wear it in a jacket, you can always take it off. And if you put it on and you decide to keep the jacket on, you usually get a lot of compliments, I can tell you that right now. And if you start going for snake prints and cheetah prints and alligator print jackets, they stand out, they add texture to your outfit, they make, especially if they're more structured, they accentuate your shoulders, they accentuate your neckline. Um, they definitely fit your arms really well. I go for more looser ones just in case you have bigger arms, they have stretch. Um, and they lay nicely over jeans, slacks, shorts, skirts, very universal. The last thing is the long line blazer. I talked about this in a previous video from fall. Long line blazers are definitely a must to have in your wardrobe, but they're good to go over that body con dress that you might feel like is a little too short. You normally like your legs, oh, cover that part. Or it'll lay over that really short crop top. You wanna feel embraced by wearing that really short crop top, but you don't wanna show off everything. Works well with that, goes well with jeans, pairs well with dresses, pairs well with slacks, it goes everything sneakers and heels go well with it and combat boots i've done all three i think they're cute um overall all these jacket choices very very good options for elevating your look and being comfortable at the same time now i know that was a lot it, it was it was a lot um i tried to run through it as fast as possible i hope this video was informational <laughs> informational informative I hope it was informative and I hope it was helpful with the inserted clips. Um, honestly, all of these styles, all of these things, I didn't, I just went through my closet. I have all of these things in my closet. These are things that I genuinely wear and like I said, have worn in personal experience, things I've gotten compliments on, things that I find that fit my, that flatter and fit my body type the most. And that's why I'm telling you, I wouldn't give you information and gems that I don't use for myself, okay? I use all of these things for myself. So if you have any questions, please hit that comment section below and I'll let you know. I'll give you an answer. If you wanna know where any of these things are from, hit me up in the comment section below. A lot of them I got off of Amazon. Some of them are not available anymore. So that's why I say put it in the comment section. I'm not gonna put it in the description box because I don't know which is which. And to try and hunt something down that's not available anymore is just kind of pointless. It's a waste of time. I got two other videos to edit on top of this. I'm just saying. But with all of that being said, and my mouth being dry and sore from my lipstick swatch video, God. I'm going to leave you guys with this. Clothing and fashion are objective. There are rules and baselines to everything when it comes to color theory, makeup, fashion, life, but you should learn the rules so you can break them in the best ways possible to make you feel the most comfortable and the most beautiful and confident, okay? When you put on clothes, you should not be putting on clothes just to get dressed. You should be putting on clothes that emphasize how you feel that day and make you feel even better than how you started. Out. Clothing should definitely be something that is fun, lighthearted, and makes you feel good about who you are as a person and the effort that you put in. Even if you didn't want to put in effort to begin with or you just didn't put in none at all. When you get dressed and leave your house, you should feel like the best version of yourself. And that's why I make these videos. I don't want anyone who 
watches my videos to not walk away with a sense of confidence and security because that's what I get from doing these videos. These are the things that have helped me in my journey of self-acceptance, self-love, and even where I'm in my weight loss journey, which I'll talk about in another video. All these things have contributed to that, and that's why I want to share them with you guys because I know there are people who felt like me and probably and how I'm currently feeling and how I might feel in the future. I want to be able to give you what I know to see if it'll help you, and if it does, then I'm glad. I'm ecstatic that it helped you. If it doesn't, then, you know, something else could probably help you later on down the line. With all of that said, in conclusion, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Thumbs up this video if you like it. Hit the notification bell. Smash the subscribe button. Flood my comments. And until I see you guys next week. <laughs> Read a book. Say a prayer. Give yourself a self-affirmation. Okay? Do something that helps you get out of bed every day. Don't get stuck. I understand we're in a scary time. I understand it's a weird time. I know there's a lot of uncertainty, anxiety, depression, and stuff that has taken over. And I just want to say I'm here for you. I'm here with you. I'm experiencing it with you, and you're not alone. Follow my Instagram if you ever have any questions or you just need somebody to talk to. I am available. And stay beautiful. <laughs>